Okay, this is a full moon sturgeon super moon for excuse me, Virgo. I've been drinking some coconut milk, so I I haven't been feeling the best over the last couple of days, so I had to get into the co coconut milk trend, I guess. Um, I feel like you might have had a couple of nights out with friends because I am getting a hangover migraine from this group. Or you might have had too much fun at one point. And so it's wearing on you a little bit. Um, so let's see. With uh, the full moon and the sturgeon moon and the super moon, um, this is going to happen August 19th. At 2.26 p.m. in the sign of Aquarius. Uh, Aquariuses are mostly, um, mostly show perseverance, gathering, food, other information, things like that. Freedom, and they show a lot of gratitude towards people that help them out. A lot of times, Aquarians have a little bit, bit of a unique um, energy to them. So, you could be experiencing that yourself. Um, at their current moment in time. Okay, so we have the Nine of Wands with uh, Deference and Overcoming Obstacles. We have the Ten of Wands with Burdens and Oppression. Could be working a lot. Um, we have Joyfulness. We have uh, Gratuity. Um, having a good time. Creating feelings of pleasure, of entertainment, well-being, Attending a function where there is much joy, laughter, harmony amongst friends and loved ones. We have the King of Wands with creation being swept off your feet. Uh, we have room. We have company, meetings, errands, and teamwork. We have widower, we have isolation, and a feeling of abandonment. Older male, relative, sad man. So there could be something about that here. Alright, so we have what quirks um, can you embrace? I'm thinking too much about wine at the moment. You might be having some wine with friends. Anyway, we have a dull relationship and we have 9 to 10 months might be in a dull relationship. I've never had that. I'm sorry. I've had weird relationships. They were never dull. <laughs> uh, not even not even ones I wanted to be dull. Um, so you might be in a dull relationship. It might be wearing on your psyche. Um, also it might be kind of bringing your, your energy level to an all-time high when you're around other people. That's how you know that your relationship's crap. If you're having a really good time in your relationship, you will feel a higher energy in that relationship than you would outside of that relationship. Just a heads up for some of y'all that don't know how to read red flags. Um, how can you be more expressive? We have a wedding. We have romantic love affair. We also have somebody who's intuitive AF. Such as myself. I am very intuitive. Um, <laughs> people don't think I'm intuitive in real life, though. That's pretty funny. But, um, yeah, my, my intuitive nature keeps me out of trouble that I don't want to be in. Mm. Don't lead me into temptation. I can find it myself. Um, what is your ideal world? We have balancing love, work, and family. You really didn't have the other side of the coin with that one. I just feel like you just want balance. So there's not really much to it, really. Okay, and then we have... How can you inspire other people? We have teamwork and... Um, being inventional or intentional or um, reinventing self. Okay, so... You could be like an idea person, or you could be one of these people that likes your job so much that you want to put in your two cents of how to make it better, or 
like more time off, stuff like that. So then you can rest and get back to it and be more productive. Um, with me, I'm an insomniac, so I stay up late and I write stuff on walls and things. But that's me. Um, <laughs> people that are intuitive stay up when it's a full moon out. I was born under a full moon, so I, you know, I have she wolf tendencies to always watch the moon and stuff. So you could be one of these people that is more intentional with their work but with their relationship it might be lacking because you're not taking uh, an ambitious approach or you might be kind of over the relationship. It might be a a relationship for all intents and purposes to stop gold diggers or people from coming into your like personal space or whatever and there's boundaries set on this relationship for some reason or another what I'm saying is it's a working relationship it is not a actual intense love affair relationship it's there for the mechanics of our relationship. And just to say you have somebody so that you don't get crazy, go off the handle, or whatever. I myself am married to my job. So, <laughs> my boyfriend gets a little pissed off at me when I say that. But yeah, I'm married to my job. I go out with my boyfriend, and that's about it. I, I, don't, I don't really see... romantic relationships all that much as a thing that I want to put my whole self in. Um, I'm, I'm getting too old for that. But, um, yeah, it, it's just, I think I spent my energy on the wrong people before. I do get romantic with my boyfriend and we do go out places and stuff like that, but it's like lacking the energy it needs to be functional. It's a little bit dysfunctional. Um, not in a bad way. It's just, like, some things he cares about I couldn't care less about. And the stuff I care about, I know he doesn't give a shit about. But, um, yeah, I feel like he's more of, like, an action person. And I'm more of a theoretical physicist person. Let's put it to you that way. Um... I like science, he likes sports, that's just the way it is. Um, he can fix mostly anything, though, it's pretty cool to watch. But, um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know, I, I can't get my head around that one. <sighs> like, I think we're more friends than we are in a relationship, but that's fine. But I think most people are, um... People settle for a lot of different things in a marriage, though. People that want to get married so bad they don't really see the red flags in their own relationship until it's too late or they're too involved. Um, but, yeah, I would rather find the right person before I s settle into cottage living, as it were. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've always been independent, so it's a little hard for anything to absorb my time as much as it should, I guess. I don't know. I think that's like that for a lot of people, though. Um, oof. But I feel like you're you're trying to figure it out yourself. And you might actually have a couple of prospects coming into view. Um, that excite you. And you might have to get out of the current relationship that you're in. In order to go after these other options. Or the option in which you want. Um, but I feel like you're not the most assertive person when it comes to getting what you want. So you might have to take courses on that. Um, 
there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but, like, I, I just feel like you might be a little bit intimidated by the person that you want. So, my advice is either take a kickboxing lesson, take an instructive thing at a gym. If you feel comfortable enough with that, go into one of these, you know, assertive masteries. Um, you don't have to take everything with, that they say as concrete evident, but things that help you overcome this fear of the person that you want would help, I think. I, I think it's a confidence booster thing. You need a confidence boost before you jump, okay? <laughs> if that makes sense. You, you know, you have to parkour hardcore. But... Yeah, I just think that you're overthinking things and it's not as not as complicated as you may think it is. With me I used to overthink all the time and then I'm like, what about if I just jump? And that was when I started jumping out of airplanes. Now I can't do that because vertigo. <laughs> like I got bad vertigo last time I went. Um but yeah, I just think a lot of people are I don't know. They're afraid to take a leap or jump. Or say hi. It's not a, exactly a 360 jump or an alley. But it is progress. You know, builds character. Makes you feel better just to say hi. Get to know people. People that take a love relationship too seriously usually lose. Because they started off the foundation on a bad, bad tone. You know what I mean? You're overthinking things. You're thinking about what if shit. With me, what if shit never happens? It's the aftermath that I'm worried about, you know. But, yeah, I mean, when I broke my foot, I didn't, I didn't think about it. Um, I mean, I iced it for a couple of days. It was black and blue, but, you know, now it's workable. Doctor says it should be fine. Uh, go to a chiropractor, crack it back in place, and that's about it. But, you know, I, I just think it's not as bad as you think it is. And you just have to ask the questions. Okay? It's just that easy. And I know it's intimidating. Because the worst thing they could say is no. Question your... Your... <laughs> your intentions, um, ask you why, I mean, there's, there's a lot there, I get it, but, you know, you can write a book about it, make you feel better getting a little bit more money than you had in your pocket to, to, to begin with, I mean, you know, but I'm a glass half full type person, so, I don't really see the danger in asking. Yeah. It's my airy side. We're always daredevils. We're always asking the questions. Especially if we have to do it in a German accent. Anyway, I'll see you later, okay? You take care of yourselves. You know, just get confident. Go do something that makes you confident in the first place and then go ask the question, alright? Nothing like a little adrenaline rush to continue on adrenaline rush. Alright, anyway, I'll see you later. Bye.